Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to a new video. In the last video we were taking apart a Xeon Phi, then put on a GPU water block. Well, it's not a GPU, but it looked like a GPU. Anyway, it was a full cover water block and then we built an entire system with two Xeon Phi and two Xeon CPUs in total, cooled by three radiators. And then there is always this comment, or a lot of people are actually leaving this comment. On every single water cooling build I'm doing, I can always find those comments. like. Why did you set up the loop the way you did? For example, in the previous video it was two Xeon Phi, two CPUs, and then we had three radiators, pump, and then the whole hardware loop again. And then there's always someone who's commenting, why didn't you do Xeon Phi, radiator, Xeon Phi, radiator, CPU, radiator, like whenever there is a component, component some people think they need to have a radiator in between to cool down the water. And that is a big misconception or it doesn't, it just doesn't matter. But in today's video we will try to analyze this situation, give you an impression of what is going on inside a water cooling loop and that the only thing that essentially matters is the flow rate. Let's go. Hardware wise I have a Corsair 360 radiator, only the fans are missing so I'll have to put them on there. We have a Corsair pump, should be the XD5 I think this thing is called. Corsair CPU block we're going to use. Mainly I'm using all those compa Corsair components because I'm just working on a different video right now for Corsair where I'm going to utilize all those products. Therefore, it's a lot easier for me to just do this testing in between. Hardware wise, we have a Maximus 12 Extreme with a 10900K on here. And the 10900K is known for having quite a good power draw and therefore also temperature. And that's why we're going to use this setup. CPU block is missing gonna mount this in a second. Almost done with the loop, mainboard bundle is ready to go, have two angled fittings right here. This will follow to the 360 radiator which is sitting in the back and the 360 radiator also contains two temperature sensors for inlet and outlet. That is basically also the same as measuring the temperature right here, so it wouldn't make much sense to have additional temperature probes on here. Those temperature sensors are going to the Aqua Aero, which is also from Aqua Computer, very, very nice tool. And the Aqua Aero is also connected to this MPS flow rate sensor, and the flow rate sensor is directly connected to the D5 pump. This is another MPS flow, but this is flow 400, therefore, for higher flow rates. Just some fun facts. I mean, if you look inside, you cannot see any kind of wheels or fans or anything that would sit inside. But you can see in the center of the flow sensor, the diameter is a little bit smaller than the rest. The way those sensors work is pretty smart and also pretty simple, but it's a way that has been used in so many different sensors. You have seen that in the center the diameter is a little bit smaller. I think it's called aperture in English, uh, the thing they use in the center. But basically the way it works is the center has a smaller diameter than the rest and therefore it's restricting the flow a tiny bit. And because of this restriction or the shrinking in diameter you have a pressure difference before and after this part. And just by calculating the pressure difference you have before and after um, the center part, then you can easily calculate your flow. That's how those flow sensors work. Principle that has been used in so many sensors, but it's quite smart because it's not using any mechanical components. She is doing much better. From day to day, she's getting there. Now the reason why we are doing all this is that a lot of people have the misconception that with a very very slow flow rate you have a massive temperature difference between the intake of the radiator and the outtake of the radiator. Talking about the ports like where is the water flowing through and that's only when the water is flowing extremely slow. Then the water would have more time inside the radiator and therefore would be colder at the outlet than it would be at the inlet. But in a typical setup like we have it right here, the flow rate is so high that you have only a very small temperature difference between the inlet and the outlet. But a lot of people think there is a massive temperature difference and therefore you should always have like a radiator and then the CPU and then another radiator to drop the heat again and then have your GPU. But that is, that is something you don't really have in reality. You might have like half a degree, maybe one and a half degrees temperature difference between um, inlet and outlet talking about normal pump speed, normal flow rate, obviously if it would be extremely slow flow rate 
maybe there is a higher temperature difference but that is exactly what we're trying to find out in today's video therefore I still have to set up everything with the flow rate sensor and like temperature sensors and everything and once we have everything set up we will do base test with just a normal setup the way you would have it with the d5 pump running at an average speed and then we're performing the same test again with very slow flow rate and with a very high flow rate and then compare what will be the difference and my assumption is that there is not really much difference but let's see loop is up and running it was quite simple to set up aquero and the mps flow you can see system is running we have Prime95 running in the back, currently just running 10 threads out of 20 threads at 5.1 GHz simply because I wanted to create a load which is more like gaming related. We currently have 170 watt power consumption. If we would run Prime95 at 20 threads 12K then it would be something like 250 to 260 watt which would be much more than gaming. This should be more like a real world scenario test. Now we can see the maximum temperatures right here. And on the right side in the Aqua Suite we can check inlet outlet temperature of the radiator. Currently, because it's heating up my room a little bit, we also have increasing temperatures, but the temperature difference is about 1.3 degrees Celsius at this current state. If we check the flow rate, it's about 20 liter per hour. I'm not sure about this value, to be honest, if this is correct or measured a little bit too low. The maximum I could the maximum I could achieve was 37 liters per hour. Therefore, we can just take this as like a percentage value, which means this is pretty much like I would say 60% of what is possible right now with the 21 liter per hour. If we check the pump setting, pump is configured as a fan right now. You can see the pump is running at 65% which equals 2000 RPM and that is the highest setting I would go with this pump in in regard that you cannot hear it whatsoever. This is the highest speed I can run without hearing the pump and therefore that is why I picked this setting and in this case we have about 1.3 degrees Celsius temperature difference between inlet and outlet. Now things get more interesting once we lower the pump speed it's now at 841 rpm right now that is pretty much the lowest setting where I know that the pump is still running but it's yeah it's still running we can see 1.7 liter per hour as I said before I'm not sure if this absolute value is correct percentage wise this is about 5% of what the pipe this is about 5% of what the pump is capable of and now the radiator inlet is significantly higher we have now 39.7 degrees Celsius where we previously had 38.3 degrees Celsius whereas the radiator out is lower with 35.4 degrees Celsius where we had previously had 37 degrees Celsius that is almost 2 degree lower than previously however if we check the CPU temperature it's like in the low 80s therefore CPU temperature increased. Now what exactly happened? We lowered the pump speed as low as we could therefore the water is tra traveling quite slow through the loop. Therefore it can spend more time in the radiator to cool down. We saw a higher delta between inlet and outlet of the radiator. We dropped the outlet temperature of the water temperature on the outlet on the radiator by 2 degrees Celsius from 37 to 35 degrees Celsius. Now you would assume you have colder water approaching the CPU block. However, the water speed is so much slower that it also spends more time in the CPU block. Therefore, it heats up quicker in the CPU block and as a result, we have a much higher CPU temperature. We have an increase of 6 degrees Celsius of maximum CPU temperature, even though we have 2 degrees Celsius lower water temperature. And that's not only because the water is spending more time inside the block, but also because we have those very tiny or very thin fins of, this, of those nowadays CPU blocks and those blocks benefit from high flow rate because the water has to be pushed through those very small channels to dissipate all the heat. Now let's check what happens if we increase the pump speed to the maximum. Now pump running at 100%, you can see it in the Aqua Aero 4800 RPM right now and if we check the flow rate it's at 37 liter per hour, see this more as 100% and temperature difference is about 0.5 degrees Celsius between intake and outtake of the radiator. 
With 100% pump speed, we are able to drop the CPU average max temperature. The reason for that is that the structure inside the CPU block will be utilized better. We have those very tiny and thin fins and if you push the water through there with a lot more force, you can dissipate more heat, you can use the structure more efficiently. That's the reason why at the highest pump speed you can achieve the lowest CPU temperature even though the outlet temperature on your radiator is higher. With the maximum pump temperature we saw 38 degrees Celsius outlet temperature which is one degree higher than at an average pump speed. Still we can reach lower CPU speeds and the reason for that is simply because you can use and utilize the structure of your cooler much more efficient with a higher pump speed. In general if you have like an unlimited pump speed or flow rate which is just a theory then you would have an equal temperature of the water inside your loop all the time. That is just pure theory. Obviously you cannot have unlimited flow rate but if you have a very very high flow rate you almost have the same water temperature in your entire loop. You might have 0.4 degrees Celsius lower at the radiator point than you had have at your CPU point but it doesn't really matter. Therefore it also does not matter if you use two radiators at the same time like serial and then you add your GPU and then you have your CPU and it's going back into the, those radiators. It does not matter. You, you gain maximum like 0.5 degrees Celsius if you decide to go CPU radiator, GPU radiator like if you do them alternately does not really matter. I hope this once and for all clarifies this myth that is really annoying and whenever somebody will post this comment again on future water cooling builds I can finally prove that yeah if you have very slow flow rate and your water can sit longer in your radiator to cool down it does not help you. It will not help you because you're losing the power inside your CPU or GPU block. So much about this theory. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Bye.